Bob and welcome to Game On, the show that speaks the secret ancient language of the nerd. That's right, Hebrew. Tonight we're looking at a game that has a kind of a crazy approach to a shooter, as well as one that revitalizes a classic character. Uh, I'll be talking again with Ray, as well as skills and strategies and a game recommendation. No top five yet, but I will be putting together something similar in the future. Uh, so until then, let's disrobe, jump in the hot bar, and get ready to fondle our controller. I don't know where I was going with that, but anyway, here we go! Okay, I must tell you guys about uh, something weird that happened to me the other day. Um, I basically, I was playing a game, and as I was playing it, I saw this image of, in the reflection of the television, of this young girl, like really pale white, kind of ghostly, and I was like, oh shit. And then I looked around, and there was nothing there. I looked back at the television, she'd gone. So I thought, it's kind of weird. And anyway, the next day, I woke up like out the front of my house next to a dead cat, and I was basically half naked with blood inscribed on me. It said, Mary will find you. So I thought, you know, it's kind of weird. Anyway, the next day I was just walking down the street and I saw this little girl staring at me, holding the hand of this strange old lady who was covered in black. So I walked up to her and I said, you know, where do I know you from? And then the old lady slowly turned to me and in a demonic voice she said, here's a game review. Remember when developers were just Star Wars geeks that couldn't get a girl so they created their own girl, gave her some plastic surgery, eyebrows, and named her Lara Croft. Then they got bored and they gave her guns and little missions to do and it became a spectacular game. Well now they're expecting their third child and Lara, well, Lara's been reinvented. That's right, we're looking at Tomb Raider for our review. Lara Croft is back in this new take on the Tomb Raider franchise. So instead of having a rosy-cheeked, voluptuous, semi-erotic cave dweller, Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics have created a younger, more realistic approach to the character. Now, as much as I would like to see an enjoyable Lara Croft game, I did sense this as being a bit of an uncharted ripoff. Let's just hope it's something a little different. Tomb Raider begins with Lara and a small team venturing off to find a lost civilization. But things go awry when their ship is randomly just starts sinking and they are stranded on a remote island. From then on it's a battle of survival and a journey for Lara to discover who she is as she looks for the other survivors, battles pirates, wolves and ancient creatures. This is a great origin story and really does the Lara Croft character a lot of justice. She's likeable, tough and relatable. The story and the other characters' motivations and emotions are generally felt, and the realism brought to the game makes this a very intense and gripping experience. I did feel guilty about enjoying how much Lara screams in pain and shock, and there's definitely times where it will feel like Uncharted, but largely this is a very different game with a much more serious approach. It's the Lara Croft game we've always wanted. Realistic, intense, and less silly. The Lost Island you explore in Tomb Raider is a ghastly place. There's always a cold wind blowing, rain coming in sideways, but dozens of spectacular sights. The level design is Tomb Raider's best display, and the way Lara reacts to it makes it quite believable. She'll be rolling in mud, scaling cliffs, swimming and trying to get warm near a campfire, but it's those little things like Lara shivering in the grass blowing in the wind that really makes you even feel cold. Character models and certain textures aren't quite as detailed, but it does do a great job of creating a tough, foreign world that is a joy to explore. Voice acting is terrific from every character and the weather and wind sounds do a great job of creating atmosphere and tension. Music is compelling and the cutscenes are well handled and although it's no Uncharted, it still is pretty impressive to look at. I just wish Lara would put a jacket on once in a while. It's freezing out there, girl! I can hold my liquor as long as you hold your tongue. <laughs> For the first part of the game, we take control of a fairly innocent Lara. She's just a young student, but after being thrown into chaos, we slowly learn that she has a much greater side to her. Lara will learn to hunt, forage, climb, create and upgrade weapons, start fires and eventually kill. 
Starting from a bow, Lara will gain better weapons and a natural ability to take cover and dodge. By salvaging certain objects and using skill points, Lara will be able to gain new abilities like better aiming and throwing mud in the enemy's face. Each action and movement feels real and intense as you try to survive and discover more about the mysterious island you've been marooned on. Enemy AI is great as they try to combat you in several ways and there's very little melee combat in the game so it's best to kind of create some distance between you and your foe. Uh, there's many little puzzles throughout the game that aren't especially difficult but do mix up the gameplay as well as notes and artifacts to collect and secrets to uncover. Tomb Raider is a game that starts out relatively slow but builds up to some awesome action and emotional payoffs. It's quite different from the original titles but that is a welcome change. Oh, and I forgot, multiplayer's there and it's pretty cool. Now there's a lot of similarities that uh, Tomb Raider has with the Uncharted series, but I think that they've done enough different here and they've stayed true to the Lara Croft character that it really does set it apart. Um, I really see it as being kind of like the Batman Begins um, version of Lara Croft and it really cuts to the core of the character. I think the story's fantastic. I was literally cheering for Lara throughout the whole way. Um, it's enjoyable, it looks great. I'm gonna give it a 9.43 at a 10.01, the best Lara Croft game yet. All right, I'm here again at uh, Ray's house, Ray Melling. Uh, Hi. And uh, we're just gonna have a look at the new game, State of Decay. That's right. Um, Ray, you get a haircut. Like the new haircut? It's college cut. Yeah, it's good. Thank you. Um, I kinda, when I wear a cap with the short hair, I kind of I look like I've got cancer. You know, the kids <laughs> you do, but you look a lot better. <laughs> oh, thanks. Um, and yeah, less hairy. But anyway, so yeah, we're just going to sit around and talk about State of Decay and uh, basically check it out. Yeah. Ray, got anything else to say? Um, Ozzy, I have one magic word for you. Pizza. Turn up a bit of Becca. Okay, so State of Decay, this is it, press start to begin. Yeah, thanks Ozzy. Um... <laughs> continue, start a new game, leaderboard... No, let's go to continue. Help, and options, and... Your home? Oh, sorry, we should explain that this is a zombie survival game, similar to DayZ. Um, it's kind of DayZ meets The Sims meets Red Alert. And so you're at your home now. And you can try and one of the characters. Here, it's all... And those red spots are the infected area where the zombies are. The zombies are there. They're, they're, um, they're infested. They're and um, I have never actually been there. I'm too afraid. The problem you're having is that there's too many infestations around your home. You have to move homes now. Yeah, I, well, I want to, and I'm having trouble doing that because I lost a whole lot of people to the black fever, and I don't really have that. <laughs> I don't really have. Well, that's what they call. <laughs> they call it the black fever. They call it the black fever. Yeah. How do you think you would survive in a zombie apocalypse? I think I do quite well. What would be so say out that door right now? Well, People we are running all. If we just stuck together, I think that oh, angry liquid. Oh, I've never choked out a man. What? What? We, well, what, what? I've choked myself. <laughs> this is really unique. This is a unique. Game. If you were to rate this game out of 10, 10.01. If I was to rate this game. Well, more rate. Like, uh, I don't know how you would rate this game. Well, I suppose you could put your penis through the hole in the disc. But this is a DLC. <laughs> <laughs> she's uh, she's a blonde. Yeah. Um, actually, she's kind of got bad teeth. But the thing is, she <laughs> so she's kind of... Uh, I just think I'm so attracted to the fact that she's a librarian, you know? You think she's a good girl? She's attractive, very attractive for a librarian. I remember my school librarian was very, very ugly. Uh, Mrs. Plester, she had a bowl cut. <laughs> a dirty blonde bowl cut. I'm not liking it, who knows better than Bob? Um, anyway, so that is State of Decay. State of Decay, fantastic game. It's oh, I haven't re this is the unofficial review. No, it's a, more of a preview. Um, you give it about an eight something. I haven't had enough time to really review it. You know, I really am struggling with it a great deal. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it later on. Have a bit of a more in depth. Highly recommended though. 
But uh, until then, here's your game review. Next game for review is a shooter, and it's a sequel to a game that I really didn't play that much, and that's because I love realism in games, and this first game just didn't really look like it was uh, that realistic. But I'm determined to give the sequel a go, because a lot of people seem to really love it, and that game is Borderlands 2. Here's Maya, here's mine. It's time to be stocking up on guns and ammo because we're heading to Pandora to be shooting, looting and dying a whole lot of times. From Gearbox Software and 2K Games comes Borderlands 2, a first person shooter with role playing elements. Now I was uncertain about this game, especially graphics wise, as it all seemed a bit too cartoony for my taste. But it looks crazy enough just to work, so let's check it out. Borderlands 2 is a direct sequel with a story that picks up shortly after the first. You play as one of four new Vault Hunters who are attacked by Pandora's Hyperion Corporation, led by the evil mastermind Handsome Jack. From then on you will be rebuilt from scratch and set on a quasi revenge story slash save the world adventure whilst you earn a buck or two. The writing is fairly solid with some nice moments in the game that can be actually quite endearing. You'll see uh, some beloved characters from the first game as well as many new ones with a huge immersive world full of RPG elements, side quests and crazed enemies to shoot at. What sets Borderlands 2 aside from other shooters is its style. Along with a mixture of cartoons and textures, this is a game with crazy humour and mad violence that makes it so strangely enjoyable. You'll find yourself laughing at certain characters, hating the ugly and often difficult enemies, and impressed with the amount of options you are presented with. It lacks in customization and RPG elements, but prevails in crazed gun-toting fun. I may have approached Borderlands' as cartoony look with trepidation, but that quickly fell away when I saw the first cutscene and I realised that it may be different, but it still looks like an awesome shooter. The art direction and characters are wacky and interesting, the world is diverse and full of the small little details that breathe life into the world of Pandora, and the colours and action is gorgeous to look at. There are some texture fade-ins and no real elements of blood or little touches like shell casings flying on the ground, but it's all still pretty impressive. Voice acting and music and effect sounds are decent and I, I did wish that they made it a bit more immersive in the world that you're in, but the frenetic action and the options to do were more at the forefront of my mind. It won't immerse you as well as other titles, but Borderlands 2 still looks and sounds pretty unique and impressive. Two things easily describe Borderlands gameplay, and that is shooting and looting. Now, shooting is diverse as you'll be constantly changing your loadout with a huge amount of weapons to mix and match with. Loot fallen enemies or bins, lockers, containers, pretty much everything, and it's essential to progress by loading up on ammo and new and powerful weapons. You'll be able to drive your own vehicle across Pandora and load it up with miniguns and missiles, but the driving is pretty standard in itself, but still adds an enjoyable way to cross Pandora whilst running over vicious creatures. The main missions are fairly similar to each other, where you'll need to go to a certain location and fight through hordes of enemies, but it was the side missions that I really found I was having the most fun. You'll earn experience points by shooting enemies, enemies, discovering locations, completing missions to which you'll level up and be able to gain new abilities like using turrets. Additionally, there's a big emphasis on multiplayer and co-op with up to four players playing the story together at any time. Multiplayer is an enjoyable and aside from everything else, Borderlands 2 is huge, crazy and full of things to do. Borderlands 2 is a very enjoyable shooter. Um, I mean, it's huge. You've got uh, co-op play and multiplayer, which is very good. And it's actually quite crucial to the play because I actually found it quite hard, this game, um, and I kept respawning all the time. But, um, you know, it's all about leveling up and improving how you're going, and it's, it's huge, it's fun um, and funny. I thought the story was incredibly well done. Um, I'm going to give Borderlands 2 a 9.28 out of 10.01. OK, 
game recommendation for this week is Tekken Tag Tournament 2. That's right, it's a fighting game with a lot of style and a lot of alliteration, by it seems. Now, everyone knows that uh, Tekken is my fighting game of choice, and that's not just because of the 3D kind of fighting realm that you're in. It has to do with a lot that uh, Namco always deliver, especially when it comes to the multiplayer. The main difference with this Tekken is how you can use your 2v2 players in each fight and tag them in at will. This makes for some awesome 1-2 team punches and takedowns for those who are the master fighters. This Tekken also boasts the biggest list of fighters than ever before with new characters like Skinny Bob and Ogre. Controls, movements and signature kicks are more responsive than ever making this the biggest Tekken outing to date. Now it's about time that they released this sequel, as I was a big fan of the first Tekken Tag tournament on um, PS2. And the fact that they have tag, it just adds a lot more to uh, the fighting experience as you tag each other in and out. You know, you've got certain players that work well against others, and it adds a bit more option and strategy to your game. And not to mention that Tekken is just such a deep fighter, like you can control everything about your character from how the way they you know, get up and which way they're facing, which way they roll, and roll to the left, roll to the right. It's it's incredibly deep and intuitive. There's no real story this time round, but you still have an arcade mode that displays a unique ending for each and every character. The levels are great as you smash through walls and off edges with full customization options to take advantage of. I did miss the Tekken Force aspect of the game, but it still offers a variety of modes to enjoy and the multiplayer levels work great online, even if I do get my ass handed to me most of the time. And that's my game recommendation for the week. Now I hate guns in society, I hate people that support them, and when I went to the gun range with my dad and I held a firearm in my hand, I vomited. But the weird thing is that I love killing people in video games, and I love the weapons that they use, so I thought I'd put together a list of the best weapons I've played with in video games. on skills and strategies we're looking at hitman absolution that's right we're going to show all you young assassins and assassin would-be's how to get into that industry and how to do it like a pro so we're going to show you some stealth tips how to get the silent assassin rank and also some wardrobe advice so get that fiber wire ready because here we go stealth 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 is the key ladies and gentlemen that means staying out of people's sights and using cover as much as you can. However, if you do get spotted, then you may need to use your gun smarts to escape the situation. So, use cover again, but shoot around corners in short bursts and beware the enemy will try to flank you. Use instinct to slow down time and make more accurate shots on several enemies. Or, if you pretend to be submissive to guards, you can use your enemies as a shield, which is pretty cool. Getting that silent assassin rank is not easy and requires you to be unseen and unheard of. The best way to do this is to create distractions like throwing bottles or objects in the distance. When killing targets, try to do it and make it look like an accident, which usually requires an acute analysis of the environment. If you kill a person with a stabbing weapon or a firearm, it will leave traces of blood, which can alert guards to your presence. If you can't create an accident, be sure to hide the body in lockers, crates or over an edge. Silent assassins are the one that only kill their targets and no one else. I mean, some of these henchmen have families to go home to. The best way to do this is to use non-lethal takedowns on guards, like choking them out or pushing a syringe in their neck to put them to sleep. 
Always hide the bodies and make sure the takedown is not seen by anyone else. If it is impossible to do this, avoid taking them down at all. Instead, try to sneak past them or don a disguise or even create a distraction. Using disguises in Hitman Absolution is absolutely critical to the success of a mission as they will allow you to gain access to certain areas without causing suspicion. Whilst disguised, you can interact with the scenery objects appropriate to your outfit when you see the hide prompt, which allows you to blend and hide in plain sight. When other characters are wearing the same outfit, they can identify you as an imposter, so try to avoid them where possible or use instinct to get past them undetected. Lastly, when the mission is about done, changing back into your suit and exiting will reward you with even more points. So that was our hints and tips for Hitman Absolution. I have to say, I really like how this game challenges you and also teaches you a lot about how to kill and, you know, clean up. You know, I think if I applied myself, I could get away with murder, really. Um, but, you know, I won't do that. It's, um, it's wrong. And illegal. And she's my mother, for, you know, Christ's sake, so... No, I won't do it. I hope not. zombie game you've played? Honestly it is, and you know, I'm even going to call it better than The Last of Us. Now, what? Let me explain. Just, watch, watch this, watch where you step. Well, okay, well, and the reason why I think it's better than The Last of Us is because The Last of Us was really good, however, <coughs> it, um, it was well-trotted territory. I don't think it did anything new, it was just your average action I think story-wise it did a lot. The story was great. This is I true. think uh, the interaction between the character and the certain twists is very darker, it's very uh, much more complete kind of story compared to other games. But this is really unique. You know, this is a unique well, that's it for another episode, and I don't know about you, but I'm feeling kind of stinky and like I need a shower, which is a good thing because I literally haven't showered in eight days. If you need to contact us, please do so by going to this email address. Otherwise, look at Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Oh yes, that's definitely getting green. I'm going to need a Bible this time. Anyway, until next time, uh, keep a healthy heart, keep in mind there's a possible zombie invasion tomorrow, and game on!